Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you this fine day? Today we are going to take a look at Google Maps. You know, how can I have been doing these demos for as long as I have without diving into one of the most useful tools Google gives us? But it's one of those tools I think we all take for granted. We just expect Google Maps to be there and to work for us. We go in and we use it, but we don't really dive in and see exactly what cool features Google has added. And trust me, Google has added some very cool features. Prepare to see them today on Dottotech. Before we dive into Google Maps, a quick shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Dottotech is a community funded site. Instead of having corporate sponsors, our patrons, uh, our viewers, step up to the plate and sponsor us through the site Patreon. It is crowdfunding and for as little as a dollar a month, uh, they ensure that Dottotech continues to be able to provide great content. So if you don't know what that's all about, I encourage you to drop by our Patreon page. If you are one of our Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Let's dive into Google Maps now and take a look. Now, Google Maps is one of those apps where I think most of us just use the kind of the top 5%. We use it to find what we're looking for, make sure we can get directions to go where we're going. And we haven't looked at the depth that Google has added to Google Maps. And Google has been working so hard on making Google Maps a very, very rich environment. And there's so many new features and so many additional features. I think we better take a look at them. So I'm going to look at five of them today. Uh, some of them are just cool and some of them are super useful. Let's start with the just cool side. Um, you know, Street View, which is Google's street level view, they've been since 2007 taking photos of all of our streets, sometimes somewhat controversially, uh, but they've been taking pictures of all of the streets. And now they've done that cycle several, several times. They've installed a Wayback Machine that allows us to go and look at what the street looked like years before. And now we can go back about seven or eight years now, back to 2007 is when they started in my area. So let's take a look at how that works. Now, if you haven't used Street View before, all you do is you grab the little guy, the little stick man from the toolbar, from the tool menu, and you drag him over to whatever area you want to look at. And I was thinking, what would show well? What would show you how the city has evolved? I live in Vancouver. And we had the Olympics in 2010. And so 2007, we were still in construction. We were getting ready for the Olympics. And one of the things that we bit put in place was a SkyTrain, a, uh, an elevated rail, and, and actually goes underground a bit, to get people from the airport, which is here in Richmond, downtown in Vancouver, which is up here. And right about here, there's this SkyTrain station. You can see it right there. So I thought we'd take a look at the street view of that because it was under construction at that point. This is what it looks like today. That's if we go down and, 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 and go to that station, there's a bus loop right here and this t takes the train uh, just as you enter Vancouver. But if we take a look here in the right, left-hand side, just uh, in the menu, they've got this little clock, which is basically a calendar icon, which allows you to go t back to 2007. Now there's been one, two, three, four different photos or different street views of this location. And the first one, indeed, look, they were under construction at that time. This is fantastic. Look, just the pillars are in place and they've just begun getting ready to, to, uh, to uh, put in the station. Two years later, fast forward two years later to April 2009, just before the Olympics uh, themselves started, a couple months before, and they're in the final stages of construction. The next one, 2011, I think is, yes, they better be finished by now. Yes, indeed they are. Look, it's open for business. People are, people are happy. They've even got little bits of artwork happening there. And then this is how it looks today as we started with. Isn't that fun? So you can go and you can take a look at different locations within your city where changes have happened over the years. This is great now with eight years of data. Imagine what it's going to be like in 20 or 30 years to be able to go back into locations and see all of the different construction and the different changes to your environment. This is awesome. I don't, I don't know all the practical purposes for it yet, and I'm sure some will be legal, unfortunately. But just to be cool, I, I love this feature. Let's take a look at some of the more practical features now of Google Maps. And one of the most practical is, of course, finding resources. And uh, so let's just stay in the same area here. We'll stay in the same map. And a lot of people don't know that you can just go into the search field and search for things. You don't even have to search for an address or anything. But let's say I've just blown my muffler. All of a sudden, you get that terrible sound in your car, blah, 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 the muffler. So this is a great way to find local muffler shops. I just click and muff type in muffler and do a quick search and it does a search within the map and up will come little um uh up will come little uh indicators there it is 
budget brake and mufflers right there. There's a, another place here. There's big old tires here. Look, all of these different little uh, hot spots represent different places that relate to the term muffler. And if I refine the term to muffler shop, does it change? Muffler shop. It doesn't change too much. But you see how you can that you can type in and you can find local services just by typing in a, a, a general category. Now, this local search works really well. If we, and if you zoom in more, this is one of the things that I love, is just knowing what's in your area, what's around. Let's say you're, uh, you know, you're bored or you've just moved into a new city or you're visiting a city and you're staying in a hotel and you don't know what's around and you don't want to go out walking, just walking the streets. If you just type in an asterisk in the search field and hit enter, it will have a little dot with every single business, every single point of interest in where you are is going to be identified by a little red dot and you can zoom in on, on them and if you click on any one you can of course get the information about what it is. So that is a great way to just kind of see what's happening in your area. Here we go, this right over here, there we go, as we get more granular as we get more, you know, kind of in more detail, we get to see all of the things that are happening. So this is a way to see exactly what's happening. Of course, the way that we use Google Maps the most is to get directions to go from one place to another. Uh, but again, we seldom dive in to see exactly how rich those directions are. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example. Let's say that we're spending the day at the Pacific National Exhibition, our, our, our fair here in Vancouver. But we're going to spend the evening at the theater. We're going to go to a rep theater company here in Vancouver and see Summerstock Theater. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on getting directions. And you put in your starting and ending point. So your starting point is the Pacific National Exhibition. Our ending point will be Theater Under the Stars. Now, one cool thing to notice here is uh, th these searches that we're creating right now are saved with our Google account, which is very cool because it means that when we go into our mobile devices later, these same searches will be there in our mobile device, which I love the idea of. It's very cool. Uh, at any rate, here we go. So what it does is it gives us our different routing options and it tells us driving, it'll take about 23 minutes, 19 minutes, with, 19 minutes without traffic. And it basically gives us the general routing. But watch what happens if we choose, in, instead of driving, if we choose the transit option. I love this. Now it gives us the buses, how long it should take us, where we have to walk, which bus numbers we have to take, what their schedule is. So it provides us all the transit, the public transit information to get from, uh, to get to follow our route. If we need to walk, it gives us the best walking directions, including a kind of a shortcut that you wouldn't normally take while you were driving. Uh, it also has biking directions. Now this is where we start to see the different layers of information that Google gives us in the maps. Vancouver has biking routes, safe lanes for bikes to transit the city. And look, it gives us the directions there. It's taken a very different route, a little bit longer route than biking, but way safer and the appropriate route for bikes to take, far more comfortable and, as I say, safe for bikers. And it's going to take you 38 minutes to ride your bike from one to the next, and it's 10 and a half kilometers. Isn't that amazing? These extra silos and these extra layers of information are what is what makes Google Maps so exciting. Every time they add another layer of information on top of a map, it becomes something that we can gain access to, we can use, we can search, and we can take advantage of. So I encourage you to dive a little deeper into Google Maps the next time that you use it. And with that, we have reached the end of today's show. Uh, there are three ways to stay in touch with us here on Dotto Tech. First is please subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. Secondly, love to have you subscribe to our newsletter as well. I send out a weekly digest of all of the emails we produce as well as notification of all of our webinars. We do quite a few live webinars on a variety of really interesting topics. And finally, as I mentioned off the top of the show, please consider becoming one of our Patreon supporters. I appreciate you taking that under consideration. And with that, I am done for today. You have a great one. Have fun storming the castle.